Of many forces we have learned in the past, gravity is a special one. And let's take a look at this diagram. Assuming you are throwing a small box into the air upward. And we know initially the box is moving fast. But when the box is arrived at a higher place, it's getting slower and slower. At a spot, it will stop momentarily. So if we only consider the uprising process of the box, we know the box is losing its kinetic energy. In the same time, gravity is doing work. And we can find the work done by gravity by using the regular formula. So if we use gravity, which is m times g, and times the height, the box has lifted over the period of time and times cosine 180 degrees. The reason for 180 degrees is because gravity is downward, but displacement box is upward. So they are opposite. That's why we have this 180 degrees. And this give us a negative work. And we have learned that work could be positive, zero, or negative. And here is a example of negative work. As you may recall, work is a way to transfer energy. So if a work is negative, that means that the energy of the system has been taken out. Well, we know that this box is losing kinetic energy. So clearly, this work is being done to take away the kinetic energy. So where does the kinetic energy go? Well, here we introduce a new energy. When kinetic energy is gone, it doesn't disappear. It doesn't go nowhere. It transferred into a new form of energy and that energy has been stored in the box. Actually, to be more accurate, the energy has been stored in the system, and this system is the interaction between the box and the Earth. And that energy is called gravitational potential energy. And this gravitational potential energy is defined as the mass of object times g which is called the acceleration due to gravity which on the earth is average 9.8 meters per second square and h is the height that has been gained by the box over the uplifting process this energy has include both the box and earth even it doesn't include mass of earth but g has the mass of Earth included. That's why we call the potential energy as a interaction between the Earth and the box. And because it's energy, so the unit is also in joules. When we calculate for gravitational potential energy, the first question we always ask is where is zero height? So in the formula mgh, h is a relative term because it depends on where is your zero height. And uh, actually any height can be zero height. That means compared to mgh, the more important value is the change in gravitational potential energy, which we call delta PEG. In physics, delta means final minus initial. So delta PEG is always the final gravitational potential energy minus initial gravitational potential energy. So if the height of object is higher than its initial position, then the change is positive. If the final height is lower than initial height, then the change is negative. Gravity is one of a small class of forces where the work done by 
or against the force depends only only on the starting and ending points not on the path between uh, these two points a person is trying to lift a tv set from from the ground to the fourth floor two ways he has done one way is he's using a string directly lift a tv set up and the other way is he carries the tv and climbs the stairs now you may think that these two ways are different you are right it's different for how much this person has exerted but to the tv set these two ways have no difference because finally the tv has the same potential energy compared to the initial potential energy at the ground that's why this property can be used to calculate some problem much easier than you deal with work directly and let's use that property to solve this problem this is a roller coaster which is starting from the top point right here and then it slides down and follow the track and finally arrived at this point now to be simple let's ignore the frictional force between the track and the car and this is also very important so question a is asking what is the final speed of the roller coaster if it starts from rest at the top of the 20.0 meter hill and the work done by frictional force is negligible so we're looking for v at this point given v0 is equal to zero all right let's solve this one you can pause this video when you are thinking about the strategy to solve this problem to solve this problem we know you can have two ways one is you can find a work from this beginning point and go through this track and finally arrive at this point you can find a total work done by all forces and we know that the work done by all forces which is called a network is equal to the change in kinetic energy which is called work kinetic energy theorem so if we know total work done by all forces then we can know the change in kinetic energy then we can solve for final because initial ke is, is zero but it's hard to find a work because as you can see at any point of this track we have different slope that means we have different direction of the displacement and because of that we have different angle between displacement and the gravity there are three forces in the process we have gravity we have normal force and we have frictional force of course frictional force can be neglected that's why there are two forces and also normal force supposed to be perpendicular to the surface of the track everywhere that's why the work done by normal force is zero so there's only one force that is working effectively which is gravity but gravity and uh, displacement always changing their directions that's why to know the work you have to change the direction which is difficult so compared to this method we actually can use the property of gravity which is the work done by gravity is equal to the change in gravitational potential energy which does not depend on the path only depends on initial and final position so initially the height is 20 meters and final height is zero therefore we know that work done by gravity is equal to negative mg h so this is the change this is the change in gravitational potential energy and um gravitational energy has been transferred 
into kinetic energy. This is opposite to up uplifting process where Ke becomes Peg. But now when Peg is less, it transfers to Ke. So let's find how much Peg has been lost, which is equal to negative m times 9.8 times 20. We don't know the mass. That means normally mass is not important. So let's call this the change in potential energy, which is negative because it is lower. But this is equal to how much energy has, big, has been gained for kinetic energy. So delta Ke is equal to one half m v square minus one half m v zero square, and this must be equal to the lost amount of Pg, which of course we should use positive because the gaining of Ke should be positive, so which is equal to m times nine point eight times 20. And we know that V0 is equal to zero meters per second. That means the second term is gone. And uh, the equation has been reduced to one half times M V square equals M times 9.8 times 20. And here you can tell that M can be canceled, which is why M is not important. And that's why V square is equal to two times 9.8 times 20. And V is equal to square root of 40 times 9.8, which is square root of 392. And square root of 392 is equal to 19.8. 19.8 meters per second. So this is the answer to part A. For part B, the only difference is, difference is V0 is not zero anymore, which is five instead, but we can use same idea to find V.